to do's, reviewing the news, pop culture, video games, movies, and shoes. Quincy and Justin with a nerdy forecast. So stay a while and welcome to the Ugly Mugs Podcast. Welcome to the Ugly Mugs Podcast. I'm your host, Quincy. And you're the host, Justin. And we're hit with more technical gremlins. Yeah. Those um little bastards. Internet didn't want to connect to OBS, and OBS said, hey, you're not doing it today. Yeah, it's the weirdest thing. We have enough internet to do things like update OBS, watch videos, surf the web. We can literally do everything. We can upload this episode. We can upload this episode. But we can't stream it. But we can't stream it. I don't know. It's either an internet issue or it's an OBS issue, one or the other. Um, I'm assuming it's an internet issue. Um, Because this computer... I love this computer, but this computer's always kind of given us some shit about Wi-Fi. Yeah. So, in, in the new house, we're currently running off Wi-Fi, but I will have that fixed. And as long as fixing that uh, turns out to be the problem, then we'll be golden. You guys will be able to look at our ugly mugs again. Yay. Um, so, in the meantime, here's another audio cast. Um, we are still streaming other stuff on the channel, though. Go and check it out. Uh, Justin just streamed some uh, ESO uh, the other day. Yes. Uh, so go check that out. I don't have any of my gaming stuff set up at all. Yeah, there's not a single gaming console plugged in at this house right now. No, this is just uh, the Roku and TV, and that's it. Uh, cable box, oh, cable box, TV, right. and it's purely because it's like, oh hey, I can go and set up the Xbox, which I would love to do, or I could have a kitchen I can actually cook in. Yeah, let's go and focus on the kitchen so I can cook. You know. And we don't have a working dishwasher. It's just this whole move has been such a pain in the ass. But everything's falling into place. Very slowly, but surely, yes. Um, the big thing is I'm waiting for my deposit back from the last place. Yeah. <laughs> so probably for the next... The, seeing as last cast was a little messy, this cast is a little messy, probably the next one or two casts might be a little messy. I, I'm really hoping I can have that Ethernet cord this week so the next cast... We can be at least be able to stream. At least be able to stream. Maybe the office won't be fully set up, but we'll be able to stream. Okay. It'll be messy, but it, it'll it'll be live mess. I've got great internet connection. Checked everything last night. I am getting top tier of what I pay for. Mm-hmm. My speeds are great. Just something about being this far from the router. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Um, now, uh, last week, we just kind of... We didn't have movies last week. What we did instead last week is we um, we went and watched some Dark Side of the Ring because I realized you didn't know who New Jack was. And we had just done the pay-per-view, and I was like, well, let's keep the wrestling train rolling. Uh, so we watched Dark Side of the Ring. We watched Montreal Screwjob, which we all know pretty well. Yeah, I knew, I knew what happened in the ring and what happened after. I didn't really know what happened before. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I knew that he was going to... WCW. Uh, WCW. And w- was, <laughs> yeah, and he was like... I, I plan on taking it with me, and Vince was not going to have any part of that. So yeah. it's good to know all the drama that happened leading up to it, especially with the referee. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm stupid. I, put, I did things out of order. We're still a little messed up here. What we're drinking today? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You're doing some kickstarts because you, you need a kickstart. I need a kickstart. I'm tired. I'm going to um, put some Motley Crue on for you, and we're going to get you revved up. Yeah. Do you know that song's about him ODing? Yes. Okay. And then waking up in the ambulance and breaking out. And breaking out, yes. Okay. Um, Over here, I am trying something called Ethical Bean Coffee. This is the classic uh, medium roast. So we got this on sale. It's not expired. I just opened the bag today. This tastes like old coffee. Does it really? Yeah. I think I know why it's on clearance then. So I don't know if it's this specific bag. Or if it's the brand in general. But I'm not the happiest with this. No, I'm sorry. It's fine. I mean, we're going to get one. It's not the mushroom coffee. Oh, God. Well, <laughs> didn't you like one of the flavors of the mushroom coffee? No, I only tried the one. I didn't try the others. Okay. The one was so bad. Okay. Was so and bad. it's not Dunkin' Donuts. It's not Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> um, what if we get sponsored later on in life by Dunkin'? That's the thing. Like I, what I've always said, and what we've stuck to is, we do sponsors we believe in, like Geek Grind Coffee. Where if you go to their website using our link in our description and the discount code just H twenty, that's J U S T H two zero, and get a discount, you'll get some amazing coffee that I do like. Coffee you've actually rather appreciated, and you don't drink coffee. That's right. And some teas we're going to try eventually. Yes, but I've always stuck to the fact that we will do 
things we believe in. That's why we dropped another sponsor at one point. We, yeah. we got rid of a sponsor in the past because we didn't agree with the way the company went. Yes. And despite the attempts that company's made to fix themselves, we still don't do that. Mm. That sponsor. That is correct. Um, because we're not going to name names, but if you listen to our early episodes, you you did hear our transgressions from going from them to how it is now. Oh, we're going to talk about that in uh, two seconds. Um, but yes, we we enjoy certain things. We are of the geek lineage. Yeah. There was another coffee company that is of geek lineage that, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm probably going to talk to uh, the, the front runner of Geek Grind and see if I can't do both at the same time. I don't see why there would be an issue because hmm. the way we do it is through ambassadorship not through a direct sign team. right right but, but we, we choose to do thing we choose to go with sponsors that we that we actually like so for instance if dunkin donuts were, were to come to us and be like we sponsor you i'd be like am i talking donuts or am i talking coffee because <laughs> i'll talk your donuts up all day long i'm talking cash well i'm talking about what we're advertising oh not what they're paying us uh, i want the money <laughs> I don't give a dang. I'll talk anything up. Okay, so this one we had touched on a little bit in the past. Um, now we got the bags. But now we got we got full blown art and bags and whatnot. It's uh, the heavy metal collection over at Geek Grind. Uh, they've got a whole box uh, for fifty bucks. You get uh, what is that? I'm trying to blow them up. Seven different uh, coffees. Seven different coffees and seven different cards that go along with them. Nice. Uh, a steward, Savage Circus. Black Beacon, Dark Wing, Maiden, Swamp God, and The Rise. They look very nice. I love the I, I, I love the little motifs on each of the cards. This is this is something I would just like to have in general. I uh, Heavy Metal is a comic book magazine comic book type of thing. I'm not. It looks like a little mixture of both. A little bit of a little bit of both. It was something we had looked into when we, they first na- made this announcement. It was something neither one of us really had a huge experience mm-hmm. with. I had heard about it a little bit, but not a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, Geek, the Geek Grind always has really good artwork on their stuff. I mean, they're pulling this artwork from someone else, of course, but you know they do very well with their packaging. And uh, each card tells you um, what each roast is very independently. Uh, I'll just read the Maiden offhand. Immerse yourself in a rich decadent and Dep, oh yeah, it's Dep. Dep flavors of chocolate that simmer over smooth, earthy tones. Under a crone's cursed tutelage, young women are transformed into avenging killers. Um, that's very interesting. Yeah, I, I like it. Uh, this is going to go on the list of eventual tries. There, there's so much here I still need to try from them. Um, but if you guys want to check out our favorites, go with the original box. Um, and check out the Witch's Brew. The, the Witch's Brew is amazing. Yeah. Witch's oh, you, that, you ordered multiple of that one, correct? Yeah, I think we ordered two of that one. And that was one of the ones where it was like, it was limited. And I was like, no, mm. I want this coffee all the time. And they luckily sold enough that it became a permanent staple with the company. Mm. So. Uh, so here's the thing. With the sample box of the Heavy Metal Collection, it is 50 bucks. But if you use our code in at the very end or our link down below. Okay. Uh, it'll save you twenty percent. So that forty nine ninety nine turns into thirty seven dollars and fifty cents. Mm-hmm. Boom! Quick mass. Yes. Uh, I can't do quick mass like that. I can do some quick mass, but not that. Oh no, my quick mass broke. It's forty because it's twenty, not twenty five. Damn your quick mass. Yeah, my quick mass is good, but sometimes <laughs> it's a little shaky. Um, but yeah, there, there's plenty here to try, and there's also teas. So make sure you guys check it out. Yes. Um, yes. We'll we'll stop plugging our ourselves now. Uh, check out our humble bundle as well. Yes. Um, <laughs> now we'll stop plugging ourselves. Yes. Back to what we were saying. So we we had decided to do the dark side of the ring to keep the wrestling going, and we talked about the Montreal. We watched the Montreal Screw Job episode, and then we dove in and we dove into the New Jack episode. And this was your first time experiencing who and what New Jack the wrestler is, and he just recently passed away. Did. Do you like? I know you know that there's the hardcore wrestlers, the oh, yeah. the darker oh. side of wrestling, but did you ever expect 
that there was someone like New Jack out there? Um, like the things he was willing to do, the things that he would do as, just out of anger? Out of that far, no. I did know about backyard wrestling and all of that. and I, The glass tubes. Yeah, the glass, the halogen tubes, all that, and uh, like thumbtacks just all over the place, um, barbed wire, just lighting wrapped around tables knuckle, on fire. lighting tables on fire, uh, stacking the tables up in a precarious way. Like, I, I've heard about it all. Okay, I, really quick, you just remind me of something. You remember Sandman? Uh, yeah. You know how crazy Sandman is? Uh, he always uh, beats himself up with a uh, can of beer before entering the ring. Did and you know he's the, the, the he was the guy in charge of uh, safety at ECW? Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. Does that blow your mind at all? Like, wait no. a minute. This dude, this is the one. He would build, like, their scaffoldings and shit. Yep. And it would all be, like, half-assed and rickety. Yep. Okay. Back, back to your saying. You knew about the backyard wrestling stuff. Uh, you knew how crazy I mean, my, my security guard is a... Um, was a backyard wrestler and you know being being of that he showed me a few of i don't want to say the horror stories but the horror stories yeah and you you get the the small feels and i had told him that i had seen it and he's like oh yeah he was nuts Mm-hmm. it's crazy shit like yeah, and i had heard about things like icp that when they first got into it they went and they stole like four railroad ties those big chunks of wood waited Jesus. for a real rainy day and hammered them into the ground so that that was their poor ring posts. Wow. But they didn't have a ring, so they're diving off of those things to the solid fucking ground. ground. You right. know, and and I always thought that was pretty hard. You know, I, I you know, listening to like, you know, listening and watching some of the backyard things with the halogen tubes and with you know, all the other stuff was crazy. But New Jack's always blow my mind because there's one thing they don't show you in that he straight up nails someone in the head with the chair the wrong way. And it just immediately pull. Yeah. Um, he stabbed people because they pissed him off. It was an insane. Yeah, and what's what's even what's even worse is this, one of these instances of his anger is shown from start to finish on camera, mm-hmm. and there's no pulling away. There's it's the the Vince McMahon thing of keep it on them. Let people know that this this yeah. is a thing. I but will... Vince would never touch this guy with a ten foot pole. Oh no, 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 <laughs> you no, know. no! But I'm just saying that, you know, he would if it did happen, he would he would tell cameras to hold on to it. He would he would definitely not shy away from it. Um, but having said that, New Jack, interesting character, definitely an interesting person. But at the same time, would not. Wouldn't. There's no way I would have ever stepped anywhere near a ring with him. No. Especially when, if if it came down to we're both in the rafters and I don't want to jump and you're forcing me to jump and you fuck me up, like... I mean, to be fair, the guy said he would I know, jump. I know, I know, I know, I know, but <laughs> th- there's looking down and finally gaining a conscience and then there's, yeah, we'll go and jump that, no problem, while having a few in you, you know, there, there's a total distinctive, like, there's the sobering thought. Yeah, I get what you're saying. But at the same time, yeah, no. He, he threw him off for good reason, yes. he, albeit very light. But yes. Yeah. It was all... It, it's a trip. I've seen that Dark Side of the Ring before. It is definitely an interesting thing. Tonight's movies. Okay. We're going to do some kind of... They're technically indie films. Okay. They had some money. Okay. But they're indie films. You know, these are directors who aren't, you know, with big companies. Um, for the most part, you know... They're writing and directing. In one case, you know, one of them starring as well. And the first one's going to be called Wolf Cop. Wolf Cop. Wolf Cop. It's a horror movie that got one hell of a following. Okay. Um, well, horror. I'm going to put that in quotations because I, I don't really know that I should, should call it horror. It's grotesque, but not necessarily spooky? Or No, not even that. It, I can't explain any of it without spoiling it, because the people out there that know what Wolf Cop is are already losing their minds hearing us mention it. Really? Because the Wolf Cop is something else. Um, and the other one is the Wolf of Snow Hollow. So, Wolf Indie Films. Yes, Wolf Indie Films. Um, Wait, uh, one more time with the name of the other one? Wolf, Wolf of-, of Snow Hollow. Snow Hollow. Yes. Um, which is serious, indie, yet also funny, yet also bloody. It's another one where it's like, 
I can't really say much, especially because there's a twist at the end. So, not, not no Shyamalan twists, but a twist, nonetheless. So yeah, his, his twists are not great. Well, it depends on the movie. Old. <laughs> I don't even know what the twist is going to be in that, because it's like he already showed us the, like, the craziness. What is it going to be? that? What if the people who didn't grow old were the ones who stopped in time? What if they're sea oh. monkeys? Sea <laughs> monkeys? That would be a bit weird. Like, I don't know what the twist of this movie is going to be. Yeah, I just I have a feeling I'm not going to like it. And I already don't like it. I don't like the premise of time travel. I don't think like, it's time travel. Well, someone go, someone leaves for X amount of time, comes back older. That's time travel to me. But we start to see it, like, happen. Like, in some of the trailers, it's not just people leaving. Well, it's like they went around like, a rock baby. and they came back. Yeah, you had the baby, and it's just like, how did that happen? I don't fucking Something know. about the yeah. island is, I don't know. Someone, someone shits their whole ass. I don't know. It, it, it's going to be an odd one. Yeah. But yes, so indie films, woofs, are the connection. Um, I really, I can't delve into these. Okay, that's so, fine. So, uh, Wolf Cop, I first discovered because of a podcast me and Lauren really like, and we'll do a shout out for them because they really are great guys. Um, mm. It's called The Horror Show. The Horror Show. And it's these guys that just talk about these horror movies that they absolutely love. They basically give you the whole synopsis, and they're giving us the synopsis of this film, and me and Lauren are like, this can't be true. they got to be lying. Oh, There's it, no way. Am I going to enjoy... Wolf Cop more than the other. Actually, I think you're really going to like the Snow Hollow one. Really? Um, yeah. I, I think you're really going to like Snow Hollow. Wolf Cop, I'm not too sure on. Um, really? I, I'm not saying you're going to hate it or anything. No. I just don't know how far it's going to be on your scale. You think I'm going to be like that middle end? Uh, it might be. Um, well, it's definitely I'm, one that some people watch and go, I fucking hate that I watched that. So, really? Yeah, it, it's interesting. I, I just... I. I can't dissolve. I can't say much on it. Okay, so we'll leave it at that. Okay. We'll move on to other things. We're gonna leave it at that. Um, you've been playing ESO online. I sure have. ESO online. That's Elder Scrolls Online. Online. Oh, no. uh, I'm a jackass on that one. Um, you've been playing ESO. Yes. Which is interesting because you weren't really into this for a long time for a good reason. For a good reason. It, it was. Can't be corny. I was I, I was having fun, but only to do. I can only daily kill things. so many polar bears. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but then I watched the cinematic. Socks talked to me a little bit, and I said, "Fine, I'll download it again." I popped back in, and whoops! There goes my credit card. Threw fifteen bucks at it to to do ESO plus. So wow. I said, "Fine, I got a month. I got a month of ESO plus." So I said, "Fine, fine. This will be my judgment month." Okay. And day two of being back in ESO Plus, I streamed for four hours, I think it was. And I had a lot of fun just going around, just hanging about. Like, there was no stress on my shoulders. Because there's no areas that I, quote-unquote, can't be. Yeah. And um, with how things are right now, uh, Elder Scrolls Online Blackwood just released less than a week ago. Like, four or five days ago. And um, it pretty much goes to just a little bit before when uh, Oblivion happens. So you get the Oblivion Gates with uh, Mulag Ball and his douchebaggery. And there's a huge story having to do with that. I, I love the cinematics. They're, they're very vibrant. No real voice lines except for narration, if any. And I'm excited to see what this does. I, I haven't bought Blackwood, but I'm probably going to because I like Oblivion a lot. What about you? You you just played Skyrim, right? So, yeah, I just played Skyrim. Um, I do own Morrowind, and I do own Oblivion. Um, I started Morrowind, but I was quickly warned that that's the game that is, is kind of bad about tracking your shit. You might want a journal to it's, keep track of things, like it, your missions. It's a lot. And so I was like, oh, okay, then this isn't what I want to take on right now. Not I don't want to play it, but at the time it was like, I don't want to do this yet then. And so I, I put it off the side, and I just I didn't pick it back up. I have played ESO online, though. But God damn, I did it again. I have played ESO, though. Um, I didn't get I, – I made two characters, so I basically replayed it twice. Like the beginning stuff. Um, hmm. One character I got a lot further with than the other, but still not that far. Um, I definitely enjoy the games, but I don't know. Um, 
having spent so many years playing things like EverQuest, this feels nice. But at the same time, I kind of always hit that block of, oh, hey, I'm just going to go and kill something for someone and then bring, go back to them and they're going to give me gold. You know, I'm going to go and find this missing guy who's most likely dead and then I'm going to go back to somebody and they're going to give me gold. Yeah, uh, yeah. it kind of does similar things. Right now I'm doing the Thieves Guild, which is a part of the ESO Plus, mm-hmm. and uh, it has you literally going to uh, the Alkir Desert and you get like, a, a really nice place to just go from rooftop to rooftop, steal things. It, it it feels good. It's not Skyrim or Oblivion by any way, shape, or form, but it'll do for a online variance, so that way you're not twiddling your thumbs being like, I can reload the save, do better. It's fine. It's It'll do the job, especially when everything's so condensed. In so a, well, I was trying to figure out what engine it runs off of, uh it was Scrolls? yeah okay so it uh eso yeah yes uh they use the hero engine in the early prototypes created but they don't use it anymore although it's still credited when you go into the game yeah it's kind of bugging me i can't get a direct answer on what fucking engine this is really? and the reason that bugs me is because there's no way it's creation engine oh no there's no goddamn way no 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 i want to say this is um what is it called? Uh, Unreal 3, I want to say. Hang on. Going to find out. Yeah, because I'm, I'm reading more again about how they originally licensed their Hero Engine back in November 2007, and they used it for some stuff. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And Xenomax Online Studios. Yada, yada. I... I can't get a direct answer on to what it is because Hero Engine was oh, not the Oh, God, I'm game. dumb as hell. It's Havoc. I, I remember it seeing Havoc? it when you opened up the game. Well, it's not fucking Gamebryo. I was like, I was like looking around and I was like, oh, right. Uh, it's just one of the physics libraries. Okay. Um, so it, it uses both, I would assume. I would assume Hero holds all the things that the Havoc uh, textures are. So I would say it's a, a hand in Probably hand. Cool. Okay. Which just goes to show because ESO is. But it runs pretty well. Oh, it runs great. Um, and then you have the game that I like, but I feel suffers from its engines severely. Uh, 76? Fallout 76. Yeah. And I've talked about this until I've been blue in the face, but this just goes to prove they know how to use other engines well. Well, the main issue of this is, is Fallout 76 Xanamax? I think so. Oh, okay. If it's Xenomax, then... It's Bethesda. They, it's Bethesda, but And Xenomax. it was Xenomax on New Vegas. You're right, but... So why wouldn't it be on 76? Well, it's not on Fallout 3 or 4. Xenomax so, didn't work on 3 Oh, it's not on 4? No. Why the fuck would it be on New Vegas and not 4? Uh, they were um, commissioned for that. Uh, doesn't Xenomax own, partially own Bethesda, though? Uh, other way around. Or Bethesda partially owns Zenimax? Now, yes. Okay. And therefore, now Xbox owns all. Yes. Okay. But I, I believe during that time, yada. I want to say it was about that. Let's see. What fucking games? I mean, you have... Zenimax kind of worked alongside a lot of different game companies back in the day before it started doing the fall uh, actually no it was um oblivion would have been the first one that they did the major handshake on i don't know did they do morrowind they did work on fallout 4 they did Mm-hmm. Hmm. okay but they didn't do three that was where my mind was leading um oh wait maybe not because it looks like they're talking about Bethesda's accomplishments under Zenimax. Oh. So I don't know if that technically means they worked with them on it. Yeah. Even still. Even still. It's just a really weird thing. So so you're saying the issue is probably that uh, that it's the sub a uh, sub area, like sub part of Bethesda and Zenimax that's working on the Fallout games. The studio. To, yeah. Like the studio within these studios is are the ones that are going we're not going to use that and right. because Zenimax isn't directly involved it's like okay yeah because you've got ubisoft montreal doing amazing work with assassin's creed but then you go uh ubisoft san diego and you're just like Ugh. 
you know, it, it, it depends on where you're at. Depends on who's talking to who. Depends on who's working on what. Yeah. Um, and who knows? Maybe sometime in the near future, all of Ubisoft can do well. And hopefully in the near future, all of Bethesda can do well. Because let's be honest, if 76 worked better, now that they've fixed the majority of the complaints, the big thing is how it works, could you see a problem with this game? They've well, given 76? I, they've given actual NPCs. They've given a story. They've mm-hmm. given new missions. They've given more customization options. They've fixed the camps. They've fixed the PvP issues. It that, now really that comes, was my major issue. It now really comes down to the fact that shit breaks in the game. Yeah, but that you're right. Now that they've worked on the things, I might go back. It's just I need a reason to. With ESO, it was Blackwood. Mm-hmm. It was the fact that I I kind of enjoy the lore of the Elder Scrolls. I I, I enjoy going back and whenever you read a lore book you can go back and read the lore book so that way I, I'm there in the, one of the major libraries picking up all these lore books and I go lore book and I, lore I fully book. under I, I fully understand that because I got excited with 76 because they announced the Brotherhood was coming in and so there was going to be all this Brotherhood of Steel shit and there was so I, I got super excited because it was like oh fuck yeah I mean these characters I, I know so much about let's see how you know what if anything is different about them here and let's see what they're like this early on, because you got to figure this is set way before three, four, New Vegas, one and two. It's yeah, it's set before one and two, also, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, it can't be set before one and two because you have super mutants. What? The super mutants came after, right? Super mutants happened kind of during one and two. You're actually dealing with the guy that's going to go through and create the master race of super mutants. Yeah, the, the ones they're going to go through and then create the other super mutants because you've got these this the like master. select. Yeah, you got the master and his and his run of super mutants who are intelligent super mutants. Yes, and then you've got the dum dums. Yeah, but then that's what's happening in where is it held? Somewhere out in California. Yeah. But they don't know what's going on on the East Coast. They have no clue. Yeah, but so my thing is, is you've got all these super mutants. So I, I don't remember the time. Yeah, the timeline's a little jank, to be fair. Hmm. Uh, uh, but, okay, so did we actually talk about what... Uh, you? Yeah, you were. You were talking about that Blackwood kind of takes us back in time to the Oblivion Gates and all that, right? Yeah, and uh, Mulag Ball and a few of the Daedric Princes and all that. I'm... I'm I'm here for it. I do enjoy the Daedric Princes. Uh, it even has a little quest lane for uh, good old Sheogorath. Um, nice. Sadly, no Wabajack. But um, his very small quest line does have him go, Hey, uh, that that person I possessed uh, isn't performing up to my standards. I need. I, I want chaos. I need good chaos. I don't. I don't want these small little house fires the, that's whatever i want big i want boisterous i do something about that and you go and clear it up and he's just like you know what never mind just fuck the whole thing i'm gonna go do something else but i you can clean up the mess that that is a form of controlled chaos go do that at least you know try and clean up the mess through a, a storyline and as soon as you finish it up, he goes, yeah, you did it. Cool. Here you go. Here's this. And he gives you jack shit. <laughs> um, that but, sounds like an evil person. Yeah. Um, and now you got Oblivion gates opening up and I, for 30 bucks, might, maybe, I don't know. Think about it. <sighs> okay. So here we go. Here we go. Um, this takes place about 59-ish years before... Fall out. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, I think before Fallout, it provided my numbers right. Because for some reason, every time you type in what year does Fallout take it take place, or what year does Fallout seventy six take place, or anything like that, it it really likes to go. This is the year it was released, and you're like, that's no, not no, what no. I'm asking. Take you place. Assholes. Okay, yeah. So here we go. Uh, Appalachia Fallout seventy six twenty one oh two uh, to twenty one oh three now because it's progressing. Uh, whereas Fallout is twenty one sixty one, yeah. so yeah, it's a it's a fifty year gap. So that I'm confused on super mutants. Yeah. Okay. Now, as said, they don't know what's going on, on the East Coast. 
Yeah, but without the master having gone through and done all this shit, how are there shootings? The, I think the 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 dum dums are just the ones that were created just naturally because then you had the ones that were like the the humans that just gained radiation and anger, and then all the ones that soaked up the what is it, stealth boys? No, the, the stealth boys are the ones that drive them nuts and change their skin color. Yes. Um. It, but you need the T something to actually make a zero. I don't remember what it's called. I'll have to do some lore digging to see if maybe they've explained it. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I love 76 and I love that they're adding story. I just, they need to fix the, the game a little bit more. I think that, that'll be one of the big things. There's still definitely some technical problems. As we're over at e, uh, ESO, you know, you know, the game runs well. For me, it was I was getting bored. So more story, that'll probably pull me in. I would like a level of ownership in it kind of like i have over in fallout i'm not saying i need to build a camp oh well, like i am in fallout they now have homes but yeah a home would be nice okay cool yeah. um oh and on oh on your uh series oh that would look pretty yeah i'm sure it would uh now we didn't really touch on it e3 is coming up yes that is next week so we have a lot of pre e3 stuff in the sense that like the games we're talking about now because like everyone's they're, they're giving them your little snippets to get you excited for e3 the summer of gaming the summer of gaming is what xbox calls it i think that's also roughly what uh, a couple of the other companies are calling it i had mentioned this to you i said nintendo kind of backed it uh along mm-hmm. with microsoft but sony had like if it's for multi-console mm-hmm. sony's kind of been like yeah it's for our, our system too they haven't really been pushing that the summer stuff. of gaming concept yes uh one of the things we saw was coach media the guys that own deep silver or people that the company that owns deep silver yes um and uh where they came out and were talking about that they're like you know coach was going to have a big announcement but not to expect saint rose metro um the one you were disappointed about um time time, time something oh time splitters time splitters and the one that like holy fuck what is with this game um dead island dead island 2 yeah the game that we got a trailer for five years ago, God, more and than. still don't have a fucking game, and now it's not coming to fucking E3. Let me see how so, long this. So, you got all these, you know, and they're talking Summer of Gaming, but they're saying don't expect any of our big titles. 2014, that was seven years ago. Oh, Jesus Christ, we weren't even doing a podcast. Yeah. The idea of a podcast was maybe a kernel at the time. Yeah. Just that one guy running down the street. June 9th, literally. Literally seven years ago. Holy shit. Wow. <sighs> so, you know, that that's an, that's the kind of look at a company that's like, what the fuck? You know, we've had that in the past with Rocksteady and stuff like that. But luckily, we've got a lot of companies that aren't doing that to us. So we got one company that sat down talking about a game I think you're pretty hyped for. I, I So, Dying Light. Yes. I like Dying Light a lot. Mm-hmm. I kind of had a hard time getting into it but goon kind of shook me up and said let's go let's go get in here you get in here now and we we just knocked it out in about maybe two weeks of just on and off playing and um i will admit the idea of i believe his name is ethan hawk and all of his the actor <laughs> I want to say it's Hawk something. But yeah, no, that didn't, <laughs> that didn't dawn on me until just now. Hold on. Uh, main hero of dying light. He really? said Ethan Hawk, and I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, wow. I couldn't have been more wrong. I mean, you had the fact that there was a bird in there. That's yeah. about it. Yeah, I think that might have been something of my... I've, I've not been well lately. Uh, really? His name is Kyle Crane. Um, but, okay, Kyle Crane then. And the parkour and the weapons and the every every couple of weeks there would be a really neat event. Like um, when we just started playing, there was an event where every time you would punch or kick or drop kick a zombie, they would just go flying. They would just go into the the distance Hulk and powers pretty much. Um, and then uh, a couple of weeks later, you get uh, an upgraded grappling hook, so you can just keep grappling hook all over the place. And uh, a couple weeks after that, then there was, um, uh, like, zombie rust, where uh, if a zombie hits you, you slow down, but you do more damage with um, 
your fists against them so that way you can box a zombie. You don't take as much damage, but you do more damage. You know, that kind of thing where they want they want you to have fun beating up zombies. Mm-hmm. They want you to have fun traveling this large city, you know. And the story was actually pretty good. I had zero problems with the entirety of this story. Now, I haven't finished it yet, but already early on, it, you know, it, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, it feels like every zombie game when it comes to the story. Mm, but they, they, they did still do things to make themselves stand out. Mm. Now, what I'm seeing for the new game actually makes me happy because it's kind of doing what really brings me into a world more. And I'm seeing, because well, the reason we're talking about this is, you know, they sat down and they did an interview for Dying Light 2. They, mm. they did an interview. They had, they gave us game footage and whatnot. We just saw a man just get destroyed by a big zombie with a mallet. You know, but I'm actually seeing the world being affected. First of all, we're seeing people actually like create things and whatnot. But sadly, we're also seeing that shit get destroyed. Uh, and so we're seeing, though, like a world affected by your game. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, go ahead and uh, get get that back up. I know you want to talk about that. Oh. Um, but, you know, we're actually seeing something change. And that was one of the reasons why um, The Division 2 was such a driving force. For now, me. I wanted to play The Division. It's just I, I didn't like... Same reason why I fell out of WoW. I didn't like fighting bullet sponges. I didn't like wasting all my abilities just to kill one thing and then I have to wait for the next thing to come up or wait for someone else to hear me or me to go to the thing to go do the thing. I don't know. It, it makes my head... It, it brings a weight onto my shoulders that I don't want. I don't know. I, I did pretty well. Um, I worked on make sure I had good gear but also being happy with how my character looked. I walk around in a um, uh, mask, correct? Oh, mask, of course, because that's my my go-to thing in games. Um, But I walk around in a Hawaiian t-shirt or Hawaiian button-up with um, shorts that match and shoes that match. Shorts? No, shorts. Just shorts? Shorts that match and and shoes that match and everything. I got the whole, like, I'm on vacation look. And then during Christmas time, I just had a Christmas hat to it. (laughs) It was Santa Claus hat to it. But, you know, that's one of those games where, like, it does what a lot of games do, where it's like, you have to, like, choose where you're shooting these people are armored and whatnot yeah but i'm also the guy walking around with an insane fucking sniper rifle so my group because my team is me and two other people my two two other players it, normally it's them walking and me all of a sudden stopping and just right between the two of them lining up my shot and just taking out one guy you know and yeah, i get the headshot the person drops right i hit the explosive tank and it blows up and hurts a couple of people and whatnot so I handled the game pretty well, and I enjoyed it. But it, what really got me with that game was the world was affected by me. Things changed because of what your characters were doing. Mm-hmm. And that's something I really like in a survival-esque game. Mm-hmm. Survival-esque and like the concept of the story being uh, you know, it's a survival. Like not that the game itself is survival, because the game itself is not a survival game. But that's one of those things that I feel like a lot of games fail on. You play all these survival games, and nothing's really ever affected. Like... It just, it's a story to tell. Yeah, like, go and play the Dead Rising games. The world around you doesn't really change no matter how many zombies and bosses you kill. Until, like, the end of the first Dead Rising when the clock tower gets cracked open, and that's purely because that unlocks the final thing. Yeah. It's small changes. It's story changes. Yeah, so I, I, I get really excited when I see it in Dying Light. I really I get really excited when I see it in Far Cry, which is probably why, you know, Far Cry 4 was such a letdown. Or not not 4. 5? Five. Um, five, and yeah. then the New Dawn DLC, but the New Dawn DLC kind of fixed a little bit of that. I like New Dawn. I only played I a little played bit. It yet. I played a little bit of it. Um, I liked it so far. I uh, maybe three hours in, a little under three hours in, and I'm I'm enjoying it to hell and back. I I just love the gameplay of Fallout. Not, Ubis- uh, not Fallout. Far Cry. Far Cry. Yes. Yes. I think my favorite was uh, four yes. personally. Four, sure. Three, three would be my favorite, just because of the villain. Yeah, it actually put a really tough spin, and ha- having it handle that villain in a very anticlimactic way, but a very understandable way, made me feel a little bit more at ease. What's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. 
it's, it it was an uh, Albert Einstein quote, and it just flipped it upside down. Yeah, like no, how do you great. how do you make that? A good villain can really save a game too. Oh yeah, and, and you know, and I'm sitting here trying to think of like really good villains in bad games. And I'm sure there's some out there, but I just keep coming up with really good villains in games that are also good. So I'm like, eh. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I don't want to, you know, say that because I'm like, I'm not trying to say the game is bad, but it's like, the reality is, is the reason why, for me, the Batman games were so enjoyable, was the story in those villains, especially in Origins. Origins, I don't think got enough credit. Everyone talks about how it's like the lower end of the the totem pole on that, which doesn't make sense because the lower on the totem pole is actually a good thing. Um, but you know, they they talk about uh, well, Origins not being thing that great out of the franchise, and I think it's probably the best out of the franchise, um, purely from the, the, the story aspects and seeing how the villain is affecting the hero. And that's one of those things that Far Cry did with 3, was like that villain was something else. Because I remember Far Cry 1 suffered from the mechanics. It... Far Cry 1 was tech jank. It was... I, I feel... Almost as if it was Quake 2 levels, where Quake 2 was just a tech demo of a new engine. I wouldn't be surprised if Far Cry 1, and maybe even a little bit of Far Cry 2, was just a, a new engine that they were testing out. Um, so my issues with Far Cry 1 mostly sat in the fact that it was... You can stealth in this game. You don't have to go out guns a blazing, but you are like the easiest thing to fucking spot in the world, and we only give you lab weapons. Yeah. Okay. Then how the fuck do I stealth in the game? Yeah, I don't you know. know. Far Cry One was a bit of a, a trudge. Far Cry Two, the malaria shit got old quick. Oh, the diseases. Yeah. Um, Far Cry Three was enjoyable. Far Cry Four was a lot of fun. I didn't play Primal. And I didn't finish five, and I haven't moved on to, uh, to New Dawn. New Dawn, yeah. Especially with five, I got a little bored doing the the whole Rocky Mountain Oysters thing. Um, what about uh, oh God, what is it called? Neon Dragon? No, oh, I did. Uh, I think it's Neon Dragon. I think you're right. Hmm. Whatever it's called, I I 100 percent that. That, that was, was fun. so fun. That, that was a great thing, and I had that actually before I had Far Cry Three. Really? Yeah, because it was a uh, games with gold freebie. Oh wow! Because it's like actually sold separate, so that it was a games with gold freebie, and I did the whole fucking thing. I hundred percent of that thing on my first playthrough. I loved it. And the, it was the, all... the first fucking scene with the fucking over the top, or no, not over the top, the fucking predator handshake. Yeah, I was I was there for it. So that that was that was pure fun. Yeah. Um. So I, I'm. Back to we'll go back to Dying Light here in a second, but you know that's another that franchise is another example of games where it's like you feel yourself affecting the environment, affecting the game, and and I look for that in games. I love that in games, and that's what I'm getting from Dying Light too. I'm oh. seeing a world affected by our character. Yeah, uh, Dying Light One didn't have much of that. I will admit it had a little bit, it had but a not, a, not heavy. It was hey, you got this stuff for us, thanks, and then. That would be about it. Like it would be minuscule. You yeah. can get safe points. You can get small upgrades to everything. But in essence, you weren't really changing anything. This feels it. Dying Light Two does feel it. Um, the release date doesn't showcase on here, but I remember it. It is December seventh of twenty twenty one. So pre-order now, and uh, there's an interesting pre-order bonus of a, uh, a costume with what appears to be a. Um, a machete set? Huh? It looks like a machete set. It looks like a machete set. It looks like a, a an interesting... Uh, a backpack. And a backpack, yes. but I, Or a wingsuit. Hmm. Okay, cool. But yeah, it, it looks like um, two caber-style blades. I don't know. Hard to say. But I'm, I'm always down for pre-order packs. They're fine. They don't do any harm. If anything, it, it's the incentive. And that's all that matters. Uh, go ahead and hit that video forward just a little bit because I want to see. Is there a steel box? Uh, is that a steel box? No, it looks like it's just a regular. Yeah. Darn. But yeah, Dying Light Two: Stay Human. Um, it's a fun it, title. I like that. Yeah, it does say first platform. Oh, okay. I don't know. What, what, do, you, what do you mean? I don't know. I'm gonna find out right now. Because I want to see if maybe you are right. Right about... The steelbook. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I've never read about anything, so... <laughs> Let this be the first time. 
That is an ugly ass face reflected in that machete. Yeah, all right. Uh, how do I games Dying Light Two? Thank you. Pre-order now. Nope. Stop. Get out of here. All right. Ah, here we go. First platform, second version, third edition. That third edition and store. So that's the pre-order. Okay. Pack. So it sounds like they're Ooh. rolling. They're gonna roll them out in different way. A like different. So they're you pre-ordering the first platform, right? And then later on, the game will come out. Oh, I see. Okay, first platform you're picking. Oh, platform version and then edition. So retail gotcha. and then collectors. Let's see here. That's Steelbook. Nice. So Steelbook, a statue of a guy fighting off zombies next to a freaking streetlight. Um, a really oh. nice box. It looks like an art book. Yeah, a uh, digital art book, as well as a legendary skin pack, exclusive weapon charms, a two-hour night XP boost, uh, crafting items, and both DLCs. Yeah, I'm a bitch. I only go out at night when the game makes me. Oh, yeah. No, no, I, I will. I, I, now that I understand how the thing works. But even if you just get the deluxe edition, I fucking love that coat. I, mean, I fucking love that this coat. This whole look is very uh, deus ex. A little bit. That's probably why I like it. I love Deus Ex. Can you hit accept on the damn cookies? It's blocking everything. Thank oh. you. It was bugging me. Okay. Because I was trying to look at the backpack and it was hiding it. Okay. Um, uh, plus a, a double axe and sword combo that looks just fantastic. That nice cyan color on the ends. Beautiful. Um, yeah, but it also comes with the steel book as well. So nice. there you go. So that's, that's, one of the, that's one of those rough things, right? I've got an addiction to steel books. For no I other really reason. Do. They're just so nice. It's one of those things of like, there's movies I own where I'm like, I kind of want to rebuy it and give this copy to someone because I want to buy the steel book. Hmm. Like, I didn't get the chance to get the steel book of Knives Out, so I have the regular version. But if I get the steel book of Knives Out, I'm giving the regular version to my brother or to you. Wow. Like, so I can get the steel book and not be like, well, I already own it, you know? Yeah. You do miss out if you go with the deluxe over the ultimate, you don't get the digital items for the uh, the ultimate digital items and you don't get the story dlc too yeah. i don't like how many story dlcs there are because that tells me that you're not getting the full game well i mean if it's anything like dying light the following is more it's just more story it's additional like as soon as you're done crane's story ends there you okay. can leave it at that the following is just additional so the following i haven't played yet and i really want to but i feel if i don't get it I feel content. Okay. I don't feel like I need to. I would like to, but I don't need it. So I hate games that basically hide the rest of the game from you through DLCs. We've talked about this before. Yes. And I will say that happened a little bit with the Arkham game. Uh, When they did the final Arkham game, if you don't own all the DLCs, you don't get conclusions to super, super villains. This motherfucker glows. That statue glows. I was at a store yesterday. I went down to fashion show. Yes. And, and it's a store that has a lot of Tokidoki stuff and anime stuff and toys and whatnot. And they had a section where it was stuff that glows in the dark. And one of them was a water tank with these fake jellyfish that just float around and move around and stuff and glow in the dark. And all I can think is, is that that would scare the shit out of me if I woke up in the middle of the night and saw it. But just imagine you're asleep and you wake up and you're, you're still new to this thing and it's sitting in the corner of your room and you just see these things flooding around in the corner passing each other and shit you're telling me that wouldn't freak you out a little bit pitch black room just woke up and saw that considering i have an led both computer and keyboard illuminating 24 7 no probably that's not. why you don't get good sleep you need a darker room than that i'm fine i'm fine also you need to put blue light sensors on so you're not taking in so much blue light right before bed I don't know. I don't know nothing about nothing on that. So blue light, uh, blue light comes from phones and uh, screens and monitors and whatnot. The, our phones are our biggest ones. My phone, I would assume yours does too, but my phone has a, um, a the ability to lessen the blue light hue. Um, and I can set it on a timer so it does it closer to bed. Uh, but they've linked blue light to blocking melatonin creation in the brain. Are you saying I'm not getting enough vitamins in my noggin? Yeah, you're blocking the uh, creation of it because you're basically telling your mind to stay awake. You're telling your brain we ain't shutting down. Here, you want to you want to see my 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 how my blue light works? <laughs> I just shined the flashlight at him. Um, 
I I don't know. I've never really dabbled in the identity of how blue light works or doesn't work. That's actually a really good flashlight. It's got uh, four levels. Why would it need four levels? I mean, I guess it's like, I don't need a lot of light, I guess. I don't know. Or, holy crap, I don't want the killer to see me, but I really need to find out where I dropped the knife. Yeah. <laughs> um... I don't know. I never looked into blue light. As I, I, I did some research on it, and I set the thing on my phone, and I honestly feel better. Yeah, I, I remember that um, when I was doing the transitions for th- these glasses after my, my main ones broke, mm-hmm. it said you can get the regular ones that are UV or the ones that uh, are screen. And I was like, well, I'm outdoors usually, when yeah. you, you know, I, I'm most of the time. So I was like, I don't have a problem looking at my monitor. My monitor automatically does blue light reduction. That's good. But our phones, you have to... On my phone, I had to turn it on. Yeah, I mean, my computer, or my monitor, I have to do that, yeah, too. No. But I'm not going to... I don't know. I, I don't have eye strain or anything of that sort, and... It, 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 it doesn't always necessarily call uh, cause night strain. So, I'll show you mine right now. So, um, mine's set to start at 1 a.m. because I'm a night owl. So, this is how my screen's... We'll turn my brightness all the way up so you can see it. This is how my screen's looking right now. We'll go ahead and change this. What time is it? It's 7.41, so we will change it to 7.41 p.m. Did you see how it shifted? Mm-hmm. Oh. Interesting. So, it, it and you can change how warm it is. Like, that's what they call it. They call it warm. Warm. It to 1 a.m. But you can change how warm it is, so. That's about middle. That's regular. So, so when I you're, marked when, for full warm. So come one a.m. because I, I'm normally around one a.m. I'm about half an hour to an hour out till I go to bed. That's when it, it starts doing this. So let's say, uh, humor me. You're you're on TikTok looking at it in full color. Then as soon as one a.m. rolls around, it changes the hue of all videos to so that. Here, I'll actually sounds off. We'll pull up TikTok. We'll turn it on here in a second. So this is a nice. This is this video is going to work great for it. And I'm turn off my Wi-Fi because. This fucking room apparently is a dead zone. So this sort of video is going to work great because it's nice and bright. Okay? Have you mm. seen what the video looks like? Mm. We'll go and we'll uh, turn it back on. And, and you know, listeners, I, I suggest that this is something you guys go and uh, check out just, just for, uh, just to see if it helps you. You know, I'm not guaranteeing, I'm not a doctor, I'm not going to guarantee it's going to work. Oh, I just I just change it over to PM, but that works too. Okay, so it does. So it does, and but the video is still one hundred percent watchable. Yes. So, and this is with me with the warm all the way up. You don't have to turn the warm all the way up. This is just what I choose to do because it's not really going to fuck me up. That's a hallway that goes nowhere. It yeah. goes to a doorway, but it's paved over. Some freaky shit. What the fuck? Okay, sorry. TikTok did that thing it does of <laughs> distracting. Yeah. Uh, also, don't forget to set that back. I did. Okay. okay. Um. So. And yeah, monitors can do it. Um, I think even televisions might be able to do it now, but I don't know if I would want to do it with my TV. So, Dying Light 2, it's looking good. Can't wait to hear what people think about it, because I'm sure that someone's going to get their hands on it during E3. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sure Techland is going to do another little bubble thing. we got to figure this is a digital E3, right? Yeah. Uh, so, pe- there won't be people getting to physically play the games unless they're purposely being sought out by these companies right uh december 7th 2021 is when it releases so i mean it's not too far away either yeah um another uh another game from the uh summer of gaming called source of madness um jeez it's got just just beautiful artwork starting off and it's a um what looks to be a twin stick shooter style you're doing a lot of running and just gunning it looks difficult uh, it does look a little difficult, but it looks pretty. Look at that. It's a really interesting art form. I, I mean, you it's, guys got to look this up. I hate that we can't show you guys things right now. Yeah. You have to look this up. This art form is insane to me. It's beautiful lighting in a 2.5D world. You get you get the foreground, the background. Everything just looks so crisp and clear. And you, of course, get the beautiful, beautiful Eldritch Horrors that I will always enjoy looking at. Um, and the game, once again, is called Source of Madness. Uh, another one that caught my attention, The Eternal Cylinder. 
Um, this one I got no words for, so you're going to have to look this one up. It's Spore. Okay, I wasn't ready for this. Oh, no, you were <laughs> never ready for this. It's I think it's Spore, but done right. Because this actually allows you to, I guess, evolve in a way that your your creatures can actually grow and do better and actually do like an actual progression line instead of, oh, they have claws? Well, they'll have this ability. No, this actually is like you start doing this, this gets more. You eat hot food, you begin getting like tougher skin, you know? And Question, like, did you ever successfully make a human in Spore? Uh, no, I made an abomination in Spore. I, I don't that, know anyone that has ever successfully made a human in Spore. I've never tried. I mean, with the mods that are out there now, oh, probably no, more than likely. No, no mod, you gotta do it. Oh, raw, oh, no. No, no, no. no, no. Mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> but, um, with, with Spore, I've made, uh, a few, like, then there's this tornado thing that picks it up into the mouth of the creature, and you're now inside the creature, living, and then you get propelled out of it again i don't but you're now different so i don't i'm not gonna go throwing any speculations or otherwise on what it is or if it is like spore but it's i mean it it looks like a more you're just walking around and choosing your evolution style of spore but see the other thing about that is there are three other games that are like this now and I'm wondering if this is just going to get kind of nudged off to the side. But I'm hoping it does well because it, it still looks pretty and it still looks kind of fun. Um, we've talked about this game before. It just got in a, now in a quote-unquote official trailer. Uh, Chernobylite, where you are out in Chernobyl uh, fighting your way both through and around all of these new problems that arise in the radiated wasteland of Chernobyl. I was here for it. I'm still here for it. Um the scenes that play out in this trailer is just really nice. And kind of um, sad. And kind of sad. Uh, it does have, I guess, the main character that you're going to be playing as kind of has mental health issues and sees things of the past and feels for it. And um, that was a creepy-ass thing. No. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Do I get to fight in this game or do I have to run? You, oh, you get your guns. Okay, good. Yeah, uh, one of the early things is you get hold on i think it shows it in this one yeah you get some explosives you get to mess around with yeah there you go you get your ak's your revolvers because i gotta say that was like the one thing in um resident evil 7 that i was like oh this part is not enjoyable for me and that was when i had to run from things and then i over the moments like yet of course eventually you boss fight everything but right. you have moments before the boss fights where it's just run moments. And I'm like, uh, I don't like this. It's uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what I was worried about with Chernobyl. Like, I didn't play Outlast. I played a little bit Outlast, and I, and I didn't like it. I, I didn't play Outlast 2. That's not my style of game. So, Fair enough. Uh, so, uh, a little bit of another MMO. Just going to briefly talk about it. I played... Uh, Sox and I have played uh, Neverwinter on uh on pc and we we were okay with it um we enjoyed living in neverwinter for a while it's not the neverwinter i grew up with but it was fine um i don't know we just kind of fell out we didn't we didn't get bored with it we just kind of was like the other things came up Mm -hmm. um they just released a uh official class trailer for bards and I, I like bards. I like talking about them. So, just a little brief mention there. Do you feel like a D and D MMO that you know goes for things like either something that's trying to take on WoW or something that's trying to take on ESO would work, or do you think they need to stay in line of Neverwinter and uh, things like that? I mean, they have two. They have two MMOs right now. They have D and D Online, which. It gets its its plays. It doesn't have a a, a big group, but it, it gets its numbers. Neverwinter a little bit more, but they're gonna have to stick with that. If you wanna, if you want the authentic D and D experience, play Baldur's Gate. Play the Neverwinter Nights game. Play Icewind Dale. Play. Well, what if you want to play with my friends? Um, Icewind Dale. I think with, through Steam, you can probably split screen it. I don't want to split screen it. 
Well, I want to play with my friends. Well, here's the thing. With remote play, you can do split screen over the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember the days of having to yell at your friends for screen peeking? Yeah. We're old. We are very old. Um, okay, I was wearing my best, uh, my uh, Blockbuster shirt yesterday. Uh-huh. And we went into the Doc Martin store. And the oh. guy at the Doc Martin store turns to me and goes, My first job, uh, no, my second job was at a Blockbuster. I'm old. And I went, I'm wearing a Blockbuster shirt, which means I, you know, at least somewhat remember going there. So, <laughs> uh, not that far behind you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, you know, plus I own a laser disc player. And he was telling me, he's like, I wish I had held on to my uh, Blockbuster shirt. It's probably worth money now. I'm like, probably, yeah. Like, people would probably buy that freaking polo from you. Jesus, yeah. I, I I wouldn't know. I wouldn't want to know how much though. What 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 would someone do for a piece of nostalgia? Well, you've heard about the the people that are um, building video stores in their basements, right? Have you seen this trend? No. Oh, it's blown up on TikTok. People in the pandemic, not having anything else to do, have converted their basements into legit video stores for their video collections, and it's actually amazing and beautiful. I, I love it. Okay. And one of the cool things that some of them are doing is they're making membership cards to send to each other. Like the, to the other people that are building these things, and I'm just think, thinking, someone that takes the time to build an entire video store in their basement would probably pay well to have one of those shirts. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I am not. I don't own my house, so I can't do it anyways, and I don't have a basement, so I'm not going to go to that extent. But I definitely would build, like, my street, like my, if I can have like a area where I sit down to do my movie watching mm. i would definitely deck it up a little bit with like the nostalgia and with movie posters and, and you know maybe you know i already keep vhs tapes around the house and whatnot like my cool box sets and stuff so i definitely think it would be something that i would be into i wouldn't pay someone for their blockbuster shirt but i definitely think it could be a thing plus we're in a world where a chicken nugget that looks like the among us guys mm. is over a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> When the nuggy is sussy. That looked cool. Uh, so what we're kind of glancing over at as we were just talking about that was uh, No Man's Sky is continuing to get some updates. Uh, just recently, not too, too long ago, they had a, a little bit of a handshake with uh, Mass Effect where you can get the Nostradamus. What's the name of the ship? I, I don't remember because I actually didn't. Nordstrom? <laughs> I didn't do the Mass Effect uh, stuff. Um, when it was new, yeah, even still, it's the name it's Normandy nowadays. Normandy. Normandy, um, but even still, you get the ship, and I was like, okay. And then before that, you had the uh, abandoned ships that were overrun by other things, and you can do it with friends. And I was like, oh, they added like co-op. I didn't know that. And now the No Man's Sky Prisms official update, and it is fucking pretty. Like, yeah, I, you can hang out with your friends as you're all running around with your uh, pretty nice-looking um, clothing. Uh, you actually get to, I guess, customize what you're wearing. And if you get to ride these giant bugs while i got a giant sandworm, an Alaskan bullworm, <laughs> flying around. It's not hairy. It can't be an Alaskan bullworm. You don't know what's on its stomach. Fair point. Um, but No Man's Sky has done a lot of updates, and I, I'm here for it. I might actually re-download it. Like, this this is good stuff. Good stuff. Um, go check out, uh, IGN has everything if you want to go check, take a quick peek at all of the, uh, Summer of Gaming things. There's a lot more, uh, mostly indie stuff, and I'm very, very happy that it's a lot of indie stuff. Uh, there's a new uh, map for Ark. They're wanting more story stuff. The new map for Ark actually looks pretty interesting. I'm not, I'm not too here for it just because I've fallen out of Ark heavily. Yeah, I you don't... seem to have a bit of a an aversion to Ark almost. What, what's your issue with Ark? Four hundred hours. I think I'm over it. <laughs> oh, okay. I- eyeballs. Oh yeah, <laughs> Jesus! That, that was that was the first thing I saw when I was like, "Ooh, maybe." And then I saw the new map, and I'm like, "It looks good. It looks great." I would probably re-download it when I get my series. 
Um, I would be down to download it and play. Um, I tried to get into it, but I was playing by myself, and it very quickly became one of those things where it's like, I don't enjoy this game by myself. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I uninstalled it. That What sucks is it is a big download. Oh, that, oh, yeah. Especially with all the DLC. If you have all the DLC, it's going to be like 200, maybe 250 gigs. Oh, oh my God. That is fucking adorable. It's a platypus that can glide. I did not see that the first time I saw this. Okay, so what animal would you want to ride the most? Out of the... Oh, fuck that plant. Just try to eat that person. It did, oh, eat, it did that eat that person. person. Yeah. And then there's the the stealth strider, which is like a snake that can turn invisible. It, it, it has a similar thing. And that is a new creature that can possess others? Just shot that guy while he was on the toilet. I don't know that it actually was the toilet, but there was a hole in that seat. Oh, so I'm there was assuming. a hole in that seat. And it looks like they've added a lot to the game. They did a big Easter event that looked pretty fun, but I didn't get on to play it. Yeah, they they uh, they do most of the. Um... Oh, you get like a commander view. That's cool. Because okay, controlling controlling a vast amount of dinos to do any of the raid bosses mm-hmm. is a fucking ass. When you have all of your your dinosaurs trying to move in, you can you can organize them by like call numbers. Like mm-hmm. this whole entire group is group one. This group is group two. This group is group three. Group one, I want you to do this. Group two, I want you to do this. And then everyone just kind of cluster fucks together, and you're just like, well, hopefully this works. Was that a giant fire breathing? Yep. Um, Ark seems to be. I can't think of the name of the damn bird. Um, They're extinct. Dodo. Uh, yeah, dodo. They they enjoy their dodos. They enjoy their dodos. Uh, let me pull it back a little. Boop. And uh, I think it's right after this. Yeah, right after that. Oh my god! Like, yeah, that's a giant fire breathing dodo. Yep. Okay. Like uh, the, the art developers seem to know what they're doing, and I'm I'm happy, but it, I don't think I would get this. It I'm, seems like a whole bunch of craziness and just all over the place. I saw faces on the wall. I saw eyeballs everywhere. It's just nuts. Um, it's one of those things where I look at it and go, "They went. We played it safe at the beginning. Now we've got the fan base. Let's get crazy." Okay. I mean, do, yeah. do, you, do you feel like that's that's the case? Because originally okay. it was just you were a human in this like dinosaur what? world trying to survive. You, you have this thing on your arm, yeah. and it was nicknamed the Ark. Mm-hmm. It wasn't what was the Ark. The Ark is what is above, mm-hmm. but the thing on the arm just got called that. And, you, you know, you start off, you, the very first thing you do is look at it and scratch it. Mm-hmm. You don't itch it. Um, and you begin to realize, this is my backpack. This is everything around me. This is how I can converse with things. And then you begin to realize, this is how I craft things. This is how I do this. Why is this so powerful? It actually has, there's an actual existential crisis that someone's writing down in a journal about this thing that is in their arm. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I I never had this ability before. I never knew about any of this. And then you have another person who's like, well, this person's going fucking batshit insane about this. And you find all these journals that each one of these people are writing and you begin to get into their drama of that person's insane. They don't know what they're talking about, but then you read the insane person and they're actually the most clear and you're trying to figure out who's going to snap first or who's going to go away. And then all of a sudden you get some new journal pages when you reach a new area that you can finally reach and you're like, who's this person? Oh, they just literally fell out of the fucking sky. And you begin to divulge into oh well um, this person was injured I immediately came to their aid but they had a wound I had never seen before and they begin to tr- transgress and begin to infect and that's just the first fucking map that's just the island mm-hmm. and then after that with Ragnarok with um, the first part of Genesis yeah the first part of Genesis uh, Ascension and the other map um, but with all those maps it's it goes into just this vast majority of maybe 30 people, 30 plus people, Mm -hmm. all trying to just figure out how to get up to the Ark, how to kill these things and go on. They think they're there for like this weird, sick thing, but no one's there when they get up there. Mm -hmm. And they're like, so what are we doing? 
oh, we're not the only, this is not the only arc. There's many arcs. So let's go to that one. Let's figure out if we can live on that one a little bit better than we can live on that one because that one's scary. That one's got some weird creatures on it. Then they accidentally break their teleport drive and drop off to um, Extinction, that map. And then they're like, well, we're here now. It just feels like, you know. Everything glows. They played it safe, told an interesting story with uh, some dinos and stuff. And then once, like, the game started to do well, that's when they went, time to get nuts. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> um, you know? Let's but, see. Our map names. Uh, okay, Island Scorcher, Aberration. That's the one I was thinking of. Um, the center. The center was a bit of a weird one. Um, I liked it. Yes, because everything else has been so normal. <laughs> well, as far as maps are concerned, like here's the island. You know, you got you got your cold area, you got your hot area, and then you just got everything in the middle. Okay. And then you got cave systems and all that. The center is it, this right here in the center. Literally, is just like a building, and it's like it it's very strange contrast. Scorched Earth, all desert, all all bad. Do not like Scorched Earth. Uh, Ragnarok's probably my favorite map. Just because it's it's got snow in in the middle and between the layers of it, it's like lava that flows on both sides. It's it's a really good looking map. Uh, it even has a, a little touch of scorched earth, just in case you want some clay or any of those things. Uh, Aberration is uh, everything glows. <laughs> That's the best way of putting it. Uh, you go further down, you reach radiation, and things start getting a little weird, but, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, Extinction. This is the one that made me go, the story's getting too weird, because there are biomes that you literally cross into. Hmm. There's, like, these protective domes, like a snow globe thing, and yeah, you cross like, between like them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And one of them broke and began to infect the area. And I was like, okay... And I tried getting a lot of the pages, but then uh, at that time, the hard drive broke. So I lost everything. I just said, well, that's more of a reason to not get into it. One good thing about cloud gaming nowadays, your hard drives break. It's all on there. Well, I mean, I could pop back on there. It's just I didn't want to download 200 gigs onto another hard drive. Fair point. Uh, Valguero, that's one of the new maps. I did not have a chance to, to download this and play it. Apparently, it's not that big of a map, but it's just... it's. It's for, like, four people just to hang out on a server, so that way they're not traveling clear across the map to go do something. Well, real quick, let's, let's pause there for a second before we get into these last three maps, because you just said server, and it made me think of something. I've watched streamers play this, and, and you can get private servers. You can buy private servers for ARC. Yes. Um, in fact, there's one streamer I watched that there was a company that gave him a server, and so he was letting fans come in and play with him in the server, because he had his private server back where he could keep his shit in his main game but then he had a server where he was letting his fans come in and his fans were actually able to come and play with him it was a lot of fun really cool thing and it brings me to the concept of like making servers for games being a bigger thing because for instance i will never be able to play army of two with anyone again unless they come and sit down on my couch and play it with me the Um, servers for army of two are shut down the servers might be shut down but uh, i don't know if peer-to-peer could still be a thing I don't know. Okay. Speaking from console, we could probably landline it or couch co-op. Same screen. Oh, yeah. That That's it. That's it. PC, there might be a way. But it's this thing where it's like I I really want the, the ability to be like, hey, I'm buying some server space. This is the game we're playing. I mean, yeah. Why not? No. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have a big problem with that. I think... There might be something like that that exists where you can buy. I mean, there is a service where you can buy a server, but as far it's as for specific games, though, no. sometimes there, there there is a thing that allows for that server to hold multiple games, such as uh, a bit of it can have Minecraft, a bit of it can have mm-hmm. um, Ark, a bit of it can have or you know whatever. Even even to take it to another level, if I build my own home server, which is one hundred percent doable, not that hard. It, of course, will not be anything compared to what, like, Switch and all these other companies do. But, you know, I can buy, I can build up my own home server. I should be able to run that server as a thing where me and, like, one or two friends can play our game together. Yeah, and that, that shouldn't be a problem. It's just, 
I don't know how EA because EA is the one who does Army of oh, yeah, Two. Yeah, Army of Two. For, for this so I don't know example. if I don't know like GameSpy mm-hmm. completely shut the fuck down. Mm-hmm. Um, let's say you're wanting to do Borderlands One. The only way you can do that now is with uh, I think only Xbox allows for it right now because they're the only ones who are like screw it. Whatever. Not with the Handsome Collection. I, oh, the Handsome Collection is like updated. I'm talking like OG. Oh, do you? Okay. Um, because GameSpy doesn't exist anymore. It's uh-huh. like, what? how are you going to go around that? I don't know what Armia 2 has, but I'm sure it's an EA thing, but if EA runs the servers and those are shut down... I, I, yeah. yeah, it's like they shut down the servers, but is there a way to millman that? Is There, a there way to force... should be, because the reality is I bought this fucking game, I own this game, I have the right to play this game. But if no one's playing it online... They don't want to pay for the servers, which I fully understand, because EA doesn't want to fork out money for a server that no one's using. But if I choose to fork out the money for a server, you should be able to. Yeah, it's my prerogative, my choice. So let's go back to the biomes. I just it, it popped in my head because you mentioned servers. Okay. Um, Genesis one is the next one. Genesis one. Uh, this one, I, I it's spaces between. I I have no idea about Genesis one, but it looks big. It looks probably like the. It looks a little bigger than Extinction now looking. Not by much, though, but um, each of the biomes are cut. Like, they are placed there very deliberately. Because mm-hmm. you got the scorched earth, ocean, uh, marshlands, nope, no forest. Ocean for me. Yeah, uh, oh, the oceans in Ark are ass. You no, would not like them. I'm sure I wouldn't. Um, and then the another one that's free called the Crystal Isles, it looks fucking pretty. I will sit on the shore and wait for you to come back up. Oh. <laughs> uh, Fucking uh, one of the people of our server a long time ago used to do um, just boating. Had everything on a boat and just traveled around. See that even even that makes me nervous. Is there something big that can eat the boat? Yes. Yeah. See no. Fuck that. <laughs> but but the funny thing is, he would always be like, "You son of a bitch, hop down there and start spearing it." Yeah. No, I can't do that, man. And then, oceans and me, like, I don't like it. And then the release of Genesis Part Two. That fucking thing looks huge. It looks weird. Yeah. Um, it looks like it has like aqueducts and something in between. <laughs> it looks but like it, a book. It, kinda. <laughs> um, like I'm blowing up this image and this map looks ridiculous. It looks like it has two separate pieces and like it almost has a mirror-ish image. I don't know. I would I would like to go around it, have a nice go around, but as I said, I'll probably think about getting it when I get the series. Cuz this would probably be beautiful on the series. Yeah. Um so yeah, uh go check out that um that video they dropped for Ark though. Uh Genesis Part 2 it, because they have some fun looking stuff in it. They got guys doing fucking flips off of shit. They got people riding all kinds of different a creatures. A platypus creature that is going to be your new glider. Oh, a brain controlling monkey alien. I don't know. Tentacles that are uh those tentacles are plants. I don't know if they're the same ones, but they used to be like your home defense system. <laughs> All kinds of dinos, all kinds um, of robots. Mechs. Mechs, yeah, so you can go full blown. This is this is a lot. And I'm I'm having this overhaul is matter. This looks like this is one of the raid bosses, which is a T Rex with weird tentacles coming out of its back. And fire. And fire. Let's not forget the fire. Kill it, kill the fire. Um, Wait, it uses fire. Uh the other funny thing uh is they they hired um Vin Diesel. To do one of the live action trailers. Yeah. Uh, or isn't he supposed to be in one of the. Aren't, aren't they uh, Genesis doing? Part 1. Okay. Is that, is that what it was? That's what it was. Okay. All right. Uh, what do we got next? Uh, Far Cry 6 has done a lot. They, they've they been pushing this game super hard. Yeah. Like so much so that every commercial I have seen in the past week, I would say maybe 80% has been Far Cry. Well, this is one that also got delayed. So, like, this is one that they definitely want to remind people, hey, this game's happening. Because it, it got delayed not because of Ubisoft, but because of the pandemic. Right. And I'm not mad at that. It's just they are pushing this, though. They are wanting everyone to see this game. Well, I mean, after the flop that 5 was. And not financial flop, but, like... Gameplay. Yeah, uh fan base plot like how badly it hurt the fan base yeah they've got to bring it back with this one oh the one thing i've never liked in far cry 
the driving. Yeah, this one seems like it might be a little bit better. I, I hate the I'm seeing the dashboard and all the you know bits of the car and shit. Just let me see through the windshield. Okay, I, I can see that. Um, I feel like I'm losing a lot of my visibility. Oh, you're wanting like more FOV. I get you. Um, neutral? Like, I don't know. I've, I've been playing racing games for a long time, and I, I don't mind seeing the dash. I don't mind seeing the speedometer and all that nonsense down below. Um, just as long as I have clear line of sight of what I can see on, on both ends. You know what would be interesting? Does, it, does this have working side view mirrors? Hang on, um, let me see when they get into the car. Hold on. I'm gonna, oh, there is none. Yeah, render them, render them, you cowards! Oh well, um, but the gunplay looks the same. It doesn't. What is that? Um, they've got a bunch of like customized, build your own, crazy ass, fuck off weapons. Like some actual Dead Rising style weapons, where they look. That's a fucking nail gun. Oh, and is that a? Yep. Yeah. Oh, I think I might get this game just for the just for the gunplay. Is that sure a saw shoots, launcher? Yeah, it's saws. I was gonna say I'm pretty sure this one shoots saws, which is a really cool weapon. But in a game where those are CDs, oh, they're CDs. Yeah, they CDR. Are, so CDR. Yeah, okay, that's actually really cool. I was gonna say in a game where there's no dismemberment, that kind of gets wasted. But being the CDs, I'll accept it a little bit more. Flamethrower. Looks like you can actually set the environment on fire. Ooh. A jetpack. A rocket launching jetpack. Like a mortar strike from your jetpack. Also, you, you realize I didn't it's see all this. This is I have never seen this trailer. Crocodiles. And I, yeah, those that's normal. Yeah, and you could befriend one. Hey, um, I did see. However, there is a a a loot grabbing dog that is paralyzed from the waist down, and he's got little tiny tires and a little tiny cart behind him. Guess what his name is? Wheels. No. no. What? Chorizo. Chorizo. Uh, this one is set. I don't know what fictional place they picked, but it's essentially. Oh, there he is. is. He's adorable. Oh, it's just. Oh, okay, yeah, there. Okay, I was like, I, I should have sworn I saw his tail, but yeah, no, there it uh, is. It's in there. Now, I don't know where they're actually setting it, but I'm pretty sure the concept of this one is it's supposed to kind of be Cuba, especially based off the cars. Cuba, Panama. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm. I'm interested to see how this villainy kind of works because they've been pushing this one for a while for a the bit, villainy yeah. and like who the the villain is and all this. Um, October seventh, twenty twenty one. I might lean in and get it because Ooh. of what I just saw. Like that actually drew me in. I I loved looking at that gunplay. Yeah, like you can sell me on gunplay all day. So while we're talking about games, um, a couple things that were added to uh, Xbox Game Pass <gasps> uh, we got for Honor. Um, oh yeah, which I own, but and haven't played since the first time I played it. But it's there. Uh, Mech Warrior Five. Ooh. Uh, Conan Exiles. Yeah. Which you know, I'm already in an MMO. No, thank you. <laughs> what, what bothers me is I've got a friend that plays it, okay. and he's got a friend that has like that bought a server, and they wanted me to play, but they play on PC, and Conan Exiles does not do cross platform. And when asked about it, the company just said, no, we're not doing cross-platform. And I don't understand that in this day and age. Do cross-platform. What the fuck's wrong with you? Uh, there, man, there's no reason when you own the company to lock it down. Just don't say, oh, uh, licensing. No, if they're wanting to do it, do it. There, yeah. There's no negative there's, now. There's a 100% demand for things like that. Yeah. Uh, man, either the one where you play is the different kinds of sharks eating people. Knockout City, which looks like a crazy dodgeball. Uh yeah, I uh, watched a Twitch streamer play that. It one of the power ups that you could pick up is literally a giant beach ball that you throw at someone and it acts like a pokeball. They get talk, tucked into it and you can try and roll away, but if they pick it up and throw you off the edge, so be it. Nice. Um, now the other ones on here we've talked about before, but there's one I wanted to mention to gauge your reaction. Just Cause Four Reloaded. I saw that one. Neutral. I I like Just Cause. It's just. The games keep crashing. Four and five are both... Well, no. Four crashes. Five, I think, is doing fine. Well, this is four reloaded. Yeah, I don't know. So... I would I would definitely probably take a peek. I, I would try my hardest to 
I don't know. I'll, I would I would give it a fair try. And then coming soon uh, on seven twenty nine we have the ascent, um, and yes. on seven twenty we have uh, Christ Tales. Um, sadly, we did we are losing a bunch, and we did lose a bunch. Um, we lost the original Kingdom Heart games, which really upsets me because I wasn't done with those, <laughs> and I've never played them before. So this was my first run through. Um, we're losing West of Dead, which I actually really like. That's the one with uh, Ron Perlman uh, voicing the like. That didn't last too long, did it? Uh, maybe close to a year. Really? Probably close to a year. Well, we've been doing this um, for a couple. Wizards of Legend, uh, Ace Combat Seven, Skies Unknown, Observation, and Night Call, which I'm still in the middle of. So I need to break to uh, hurry up and finish that. Yeah. Um. But as always, when these games are marked for leaving like this, they do um, normally do a, uh, some kind of discount or sale on them for Game Pass members. Yeah. Uh, taking a quick peek over at the Ascent, which we're, you said we're going to get at the end of July? Yeah. Huh. I think that's when it's actually coming out. I think this is yeah, going this to be is a going launch. Straight. Yeah. You can, it, I think you can download now so that when it does launch, it's pre-downloaded. Gotcha. Um, it kind of looks boring. It, it's a twin stick shooter, um, similar to Smash TV. If you've ever played that in the past, this guy sucks. Uh, I don't think actually he's been hitting pretty good. It's just he, he doesn't have dodge game though. Like he needs to move. He needs to look and anticipate where his hits are coming from. I I, I think there's a lot on screen. It's a, it's a little busy. Not bad busy, but a lot busy. I don't like the your characters lit up while everything else is not lit up thing. That doesn't make sense, and it's not God. good visuals. Got to keep up. With where you're at, I guess? I don't know. I mean, at least put like a flashlight so it makes sense. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I mean, this is also early? No, nope, May. Never mind. Yeah, well. Oh, it goes to actual cutscenes, though, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and then there's Ultra Age. That's another game that's been kind of... Monster Hunter meets uh, Final, Fantasy. Final Fantasy meets... Um, what is that? Uh, Code Vein, because there's some major story elements a part of it. Um, I get kind of bored with things like this after a bit. Monster Hunter pulled me back in for a brief bit, and I don't know why I fell back out. Like I don't, I don't know. Me, I mean, I, it also sucks to have ADHD, but uh, <laughs> like the only thing that's kept me in through all this time and effort is Dungeons and Dragons, just because it's an outlet. It's not necessarily a distraction, you yeah. know. I don't know. With, with, with Monster Hunter, if it wasn't cats making me food, I got bored. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I also don't like the fact that you can't actually properly play with your friends on uh, Monster Hunter. Oh. They really drop the ball on the multiplayer. Wait, what? So you can't exactly, at least on console, um, you can't pair up and play with your friends. You, you can sir. be in the same social places, but you cannot go out into the world and fight together. Yes, you can. No, you can't. Yes, you can. No, you can't. I I have literally tried to do it on console. You cannot do it. I have looked into all of it. You cannot do it. The current Monster Hunter that we have on Game Pass, you cannot do it. Monster Hunter World, you can do it. You can play with... I, I did it with Doki. On console? On console. Xbox, Xbox. I don't know how the hell you did it. It, you just have to start up a quest. They join up on the quest. He came in and smashed the shit out of a young cuckoo. Okay, so you're doing it just quest by quest. So when the quest ends, you guys are kicked back out of playing together. Yes. That's fucking terrible, and I don't want that. Okay. I want to go out and fight shit with my friends. You want to just go. You want it to be seamless. Not even seamless. Just if we both load into the same monster uh, fucking wrecking area. like We were in the social area together. Mm -hmm. We should be able to move, move. To go fight monsters. Yes. It shouldn't be a quest by quest thing. Yeah, I can concur with that. So, um, Sorry. Uh, what, what were we talking about next? Uh, there's the Jay and Silent Bob thing. Uh, Jay and Silent Bob is uh, coming to is digitals. Uh, you can actually get digital. Uh, it's getting on Xbox and everything rather than just you, the limited run physical copies. Yeah, you have the Switch version. I bought the Switch version. I should have bought the original Nintendo version. I knew I should have because I bought the Switch version thinking I was going to get a Switch. And I didn't get a Switch. I should have bought the NES version because I have an NES. Uh, if you want, next week I can bring the Switch over. If you're, I mean, sure, it'd be cool to play it. I, it's packed somewhere. Yeah. But oh, yeah. <laughs> it'd be cool to play it. But it's just one of those things of like, 
I'm kicking myself. I should have just bought the NES version. My NES works, you know. Yeah. Um, internet's acting a little funky. Uh, there's a game called Run Die Run Again that caught my attention just because it's just this demo of someone who was like, "I want to put Unity to the test," which uh, is similar to. I forget what the acronym is, but it is basically speedrunners in hell, hmm. and they're running around doing all that. This seems to be similar in that vein of just run from start to finish, doing interesting grapple mechanics, dash mechanics, and so on and so forth. And I like how people are pulling this through, but we we already have a game that's similar to this. Uh, Blade Runners, I believe it is, where that one guy does all his dashing around and slicing people up and all that. And I'm like, that looks better than this. Mm-hmm. I get having tech demos. I get having, you know, wanting to build a game. But if you're impeding on someone else's work to the point where people are already doing this or doing it better, I, I, I want to see better. I want to see improvements, not the same thing. Um... Everything else kind of looked a little samey. Nothing really caught my attention. Uh, a nice little um, game called Fire Tonight. It's uh, a nice little social sneak around goofy game. It's very story centric. Yes, very story centric. Um it's got a love interest that you're trying to keep in contact with uh, your weird spiritual side as well. Neutral. Uh, Is this from the same people that did um, mm-hmm. the after party? Okay. I don't know. It's kind of got that got, feel to me. It does, but I do not know. I actually rather one. enjoyed that one. I didn't finish it before it came off a of game pass, sadly, but uh, I rather enjoyed that one. It doesn't say, it doesn't say on who made, but um another interesting one uh snoper eh, sniper ghost warrior contracts 2 uh i like the snoper eh, yeah yeah i like the sniper ghost warrior series uh having another game where you get to watch your bullet travel into some guy's nuts always a always a fun trip um i played the first one it was okay personally i like the uh, other sniper franchise better um, the world war ii ones yeah okay um Sniper Elite? Yeah. Yeah. But, no, I played the first one in this franchise. It was enjoyable. I didn't play the rest, though, so... Yeah. Uh, This, um... What was the gentleman you had me follow to do his free Friday thing? If you remember his name offhand. Oh, you're talking about the Xbox guy? Yeah. Oh, that's uh, Major Nelson. Major Nelson, thank you. Uh, He was giving a copy of this away last Friday. Oh, cool. And I was like, ooh. I've been too busy to do the free code Fridays. Yeah. I, I just... I threw it out there for the first one. The second one was, um some uh, i think for uh the knockout game you were talking about um gotcha. but even still like i'm i'm happy he's given these away because it still looks very good yeah uh warhammer vermintide 2 gets a dlc neutral sisters um, of the throne uh, thorn yeah um for warhammer fantasy a lot of people have been like Eh, it's it's something to tide us over until more Warhammer. Speaking of which, more Warhammer has been re- uh, announced. Uh, a couple other ones. Uh, one where you actually play as an orc. Uh, let me see if I can find the name of it. Warhammer. Uh, I know it's a weird spelling, so... Skoom? Skoom? Shoom? No. Ah... New game. Uh, Dark Tide, Black Sector, Chaos, Necromata, Dark Tide. Damn. But it's it's three words that the orc of Warhammer say. They shoost. Hmm. Um, where you get to play as an orc and do daka daka, as they say as well. I don't know. Warhammer and me, I tried learning. I tried there's so much that I just, I can't, I can't wrap my, my tiny little, I want to give peace a chance brain around. Mm-hmm. What about you? How do you feel about it? I've never experienced anything Warhammer. The problem is, is there's so much that I'm intimidated. It's kind of like starting Bleach. Okay, yeah. You know, you look at Bleach and go, I, I know it's a good anime, 
But holy fuck, there's so much of it. Yeah. You know, it's like, I know Warhammer's good. It, it has to be. But there's so much of it. Yeah, there's like 40 plus factions plus other types such as orcs, necrons, um, uh, the Forgotten Legions. Um, yeah. Like, it's one of those things where I'm probably going to have to get like some kind of like lore walkthrough podcast to sit there and listen to all of it. Uh, there was something, one of my players, when he wanted to get me to have an understanding of what Warhammer was, he gave me... Uh, something that was only like a half hour long and i was just like oh, okay i i listened to half of it and i was just like it makes sense but it's still a lot it, it was a lot to throw into it um oh man it sucks that i can't remember the other 40k game that was going to be coming out no is that going to help me out no yeah well i tried um, and then, of course, new trailers for what we already knew was coming out. The, uh, Ratchet Clank got another little tiny snippet trailer. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I felt, I, I loved Ratchet Clank. It was like my go to PlayStation, uh, game, but, you know, I don't know with the way Sony, you know, and, I, and I'm assuming it's Sony and not, and not Insomniac handles it, you know, they make it kind of difficult to play the ones that were on three, um, you know, I can't go and pick up a copy. I have to pay brand new price for a digital version, all that shit, you know? Yeah. So like, I've kind of fallen behind on the story, and I, I don't have the new PlayStation 5, so I'm just... It's going to stay there. It's not pulling me in. Yep. So. Uh, this I'll talk about in a little bit, but um, a lot, a lot to still talk about. I think there are maybe... Oh, here we go. Warhammer 40K. Shooters, Blood, and Teeth. There you go. That pronunciation. Uh, let's actually look at that real quick. It looks cheesy as hell. For a Warhammer game, it looks cheesy. Yeah. Um, but, of course, you've got just blood and gore and guts. It's, um, what do they call this style of game? I guess it would be a running gun style of game, but it looks co-opable and strange. That might be fun just as a dick around thing. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you got to have games on your console that are not the things where you're going to log, log six hours in, eight hours in, 12 hours. And you got to have that thing where it's like, I got 30 minutes to kill, or I've got an hour to kill, or I just need to, you know, let my brain just melt. Yeah, veg for a bit. Yeah. You got to have games like that. And I feel like this is one of those ones that would be, it would be really good. Like, if it's, <clears throat> you know, that's how Enter the Gungeon is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, now I remember what this game reminds me of. Uh, Metal Slug. Yeah, kinda. So, ooh, 2022. That's still pretty far out. Yeah. Okay. Um, but back over to this. We'll stay right there. Uh, that goes at the very end. And I guess we're ready for this unless you have any more gaming no, news. we can go on ahead. But up, up, shoe news. So when I brought these up to, to Quincy, he made a very interesting notice. They are Nerf uh, Rebox, Nerf Rebox, and when he noticed the original ones, they are a harsh orange on top of a neon green, which he made the astute thing of, these look like Nickelodeon shoes. They do. And I would have been like, hmm, that would, they, they probably would have been a little bit better with that. Uh, but there are four different styles. Uh, $160 a piece, from what I can gather. Ouch. Um, That's a pretty shoe. Oh, I take that back. The backboard breaker, this one here in the black, is 110 Which is the ugliest one out of all of them. Really? I don't like it. I don't know. Oh, fuchsia is a, a bit of a an interesting color on its own. I mean, it's not even that. It's just it's the whole thing together. It's all of it together. I, I don't like how any of it works. Like, no. the main ones, they're fun. They're weird. They're wacky. The other ones feel like they went, well, we have these colors. Let's put them on a shoe. Okay. I mean, yeah. Yeah. A little bit. And then, of course, you got the pump. and You don't like the pump as it is. Do you remember the days of people pumping their shoes up before they try to play basketball? Makes them tighter. Makes you jump higher. I don't know. It, a, pl a placebo effect of you get new shoes, you run faster. Yeah. Like, I don't know. 
But even still, the, uh, these four styles look good. Head over to Reebok.com, uh, take a peek at... There was no release date, but now you're going. I'm double checking. Maybe it might be on one of the shoes because I know it, I know one of them was just straight up not available as far as ah June 25th. Okay, it's coming up. Yes, and uh, we got more though, right? Yes, because this one's like just not available at all for that. So I'll assume it's it's a part of the Pomp Omni. So I'll assume it's the 162. But yes, we have another one. Boop. So oh, it's weird. Yeah, it's very weird. Um. I read manga from time to time, and the shoes normally look fine. Like, there's a bit of, like, the swoosh is this weird plush, and it's in a soft cherry blossom color. There, it's like a cream with cherry blossom accents, harsh pink on the very top. Uh, the swoosh is like a, a, a salmon color. That's, it looks it, almost like um, norm- shag carpeting. A little bit, yeah. The whole shoe looks fine. The bottom of the shoe, however, has this translucence that you can see through to see anime eyes with a little bit of a blush. Did your parents ever have shag carpeting? Uh, I think grandma did. Oof. Yeah. It was the worst. Oh my god, it's on the back. It's on the back. The, 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 the little plush is on the back as well. The anime eyes. I don't know what that translates to. Let me see if uh, in the little snippet it says what it translates. Nah, it doesn't. Um, But it's... Everyone really enjoyed Demon Slayer the movie when it dropped out here. Enough so that there's a lot more import now. And I'm happy to see it. But at the same time, I'm like, how how many weebs are going to be popping out of the woodwork right now? Only weebs call people weebs. Well, here's the thing. You weeb. That's fine. <laughs> Here's the thing. When I went to when I went to work last night, there was a lot of people wearing just ra- regular straight up anime shirts, like a lot. More. That's awesome. Like it, it going from a year ago today. Well, I can't really say that, but two years ago today to now, you know, it, it's heavy, drastic. But it's kind of like the the big comic book change, you know. I was bullied in school for liking comics and collecting comics and all that. And now the people that bully me come and go, I'm confused watching Marvel. Can you explain it to me? Yeah. You know? like No, you no, you stuffed me in a locker. Get out of here. No, I, I never let anybody stuff me in a locker. I, I fought back. That was that was the one thing. I was the nerd that knew how to throw a punch. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I was the, I'll, I'll take it because I, I have no pain inhibitors from time to time. I can just take it. I don't care. Yeah, no, they... I, I was the nerd that fought back, so the bullying, you know, it didn't quite work the way they wanted. Cool, 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 cool. cool. But, uh, yeah, so now we're seeing it with, with anime, though. Like, you know, and we have been for a while now. I don't know if I want that on the bottom of it. Like, I, I like the idea of eyes on the bottom of my feet, but... I don't. <laughs> not this. I not want, this. I don't want to see when I step in gum. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Uh, but that's the shoe news for today. Uh, there was one more pair of shoe news. It's just, it, it, I would feel very awkward talking about them, so skip. Okay. Yeah, no, no. Okay, I, I don't know what you're referring to. I, so, I, yeah. okay, so uh, we've been waiting to hear more about Into the Spider Verse two, and we finally heard something. We have an actress. Um, so. We've confirmed, uh, if I, I can't, do you have her name? Uh. Because I do not have her name, and I don't want to miss it. But well, we're getting Spider-Woman. That's that's the beginning yes. part of this, is we're getting Spider-Woman. Uh, Isa- uh, Isaiah Ray. Is that how you say her name? Let me see. Isaiah Ray? Issa Ray. Issa Ray. I'm sorry. I don't mean to pronounce your name wrong. That, that's on me. Um, she's going to be playing Jessica Drew or Spider-Woman um, in Into the Spider-Verse 2, which is awesome. So, you know, we've got Gwen Stacy returning. We've got Miles Morales returning. And now we've got uh, this new character. Um, the What sucks is, like, you know, I'm excited to see, you know, what she does with voice acting. I, I think she's going to do amazing. Um, I mean, I know she's been part of some, some pretty decent stuff with... Um, She's a part of Insecure over on HBO. Um, she's part of the uh, Black Lady Sketch Show. Hmm. Um, so she's, she produces a lot of stuff. She does some acting. And so I'm really excited to see what she does. But what sucks is she's voicing probably my least favorite character from 
the Spider-Verse. What about Superior Spider-Man? Oh, that's a really tough battle. I hate them both so much. And there you go. I'm so oh. glad that I made you think today. Because I know both of us aren't even in that position, but I want to put put oh, at least one of us there. Both so much. And, and to anyone that thinks... Well, oh, that, uh, wait. I got a, I got one more. Spider-Man 2099. Oh, I don't like 2099. Huh? I think 2099 is kind of fun. Really? Yeah, I, I enjoy the whole 2099 run. It's interesting. And it's that. weird that he's not a Parker, that he accidentally gets Parker DNA spliced with him, but... See, as for me, I hate Punisher 2099. Yeah. Out of all of them. I haven't tw- read it, so... Like, like as, as far as, like, the most fun, probably Frankencastle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a man too angry to die. Have you seen uh, what the, the look for Ghost Rider 2099 is? I own a couple issues. Yeah, that one's an interesting one. I like the suit a lot for Spider-Man 2099. And I also like um, that they tried to like bring in like Hispanic culture with the suit, I think. If I remember correctly, it has to do with him going to like a Day of the Dead festival or something like that. Like, um, I, think I, I think I actually showed you. Uh, do, 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 do. Like, I have the, the, the full-out one that has like a um, uh, silver cover. Mm-hmm. Uh, not that one. Looks similar to that one, but not that one. Um, and I, I looked it up, and it was like, ah, this one. It has a little bit of silver there. Oh, okay. Um, kind of T one thousand. T one thousand esque. Yeah. Um, I I I don't know. I read them, and I I got a feel of like uh, Rob Liefeld, like how he draws. I, I got that kind of feel that they were trying to get some liberties from that. Um, a lot of line work went into it. Not a lot of coloring, but a lot of line work went into uh, Ghost Rider 2099. So Not a lot of work went into Punisher 2099. The other 2099s we have is Fantastic Four, Ooh. Hulk, X-Men, mm-hmm. X-Nation. Um, obviously, uh, Spider-Man and Punisher. Um, and there's also uh, Doom and uh, Ravage. Ravage? Yeah, Ravage. Oh, okay. I like that cover of Spider-Man 2099. Yeah, uh, and they gave, like, a so that's the Venom. Like, they gave a twist on all the villains, too. So, like, you've got a 2099 Venom. You've got a 2099 uh, Goblin. Um, it, it's actually really interesting. Um, while we're talking about Spidey stuff, um, so yesterday was my anniversary. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Lauren bought me a Lego set. She got me Central Park. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. She also got me a Spider Ham keychain, and I love him so much. Is uh, talking animals weird in your in your world? <laughs> What's wrong with cartoons? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a weird Punisher look. Yeah, I didn't. Mm. It, it, you didn't like the writing either, or is it just the, the artwork? The writing too. Um, they made. The, I don't even remember what this person's name is. Not Frank. Um, but they made him be very, uh, I'm just cleaning up the streets just for the sake of it. There's no real motivation behind him. Mm-hmm. And, uh, when he finally gains motivation, he just goes, eh, I'm still going to do it for me. I'm like, mm-hmm. I think I actually might own the entire, um, Spider-Man 2099 run. Really? Yeah, I think I've got the whole thing or damn near the whole thing. Nice. Um, I'm trying to find out. So it's. Jake Gallows is Punisher. Yeah. In this. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no. Uh, out of the Spider-Verse, there's really only two spiders I don't like. And it's Spider-Woman. And it's Superior. Superior. I'm not sure which one I hate more. Mm. Um, I even read the Brian Michael Bendis origin story for Spider-Woman. I own the whole freaking run. It's the, I can't remember the artist's names, but it's two brothers. They did some stuff over at Image. They did Girls, and they did... Uh, uh, the sword. Uh, the sword's actually really good. The girl's a little weird, but enjoyable. Um, and they just, they, they, they did the artwork for it. And it just, I don't know. The whole thing didn't draw me in. It gets weird. It's, it's not enjoyable. She's a spider with no spider powers. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. The whole thing is just not for me. Um, I will say the covers for Superior is kind of nice, though. Superior did have some good cover work, but the oh. Amazing Spider-Man stuff, the Amazing Spider-Man covers they started doing after Superior, they're beautiful. Okay. Um, not to say that these, these don't have beautiful covers as well, but still. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm not into Spider-Woman. And it's not because it's a woman thing. I love Spider-Girl. I love Silk. Um, I, I love Spider-Gwen. 
they're all great. It's just it's Spider Woman specifically. I do not like that character. Well, so, hopefully this will pick it back up. Hopefully, um, I, I, I hope to see good things coming from this actress doing doing the voicing. I, you what, know, I hope it works out. A little bit of a, a tandem topic. Um, there was a couple uh, comic book panels where I had seen Peter with his his mask on that maybe goes up to just above his upper lip all torn to shreds and he's talking to someone and he's like a little delirious you can tell he's a little delirious in how they drew him and he's you know talking about something i don't know why it clicked in my head but seeing this jarred it Mm -hmm. um and i was like for some ungodly reason there's something there but I, i don't know just thought i'd mention it so um if anyone out there is like wondering why Spider Man's like Herod, there's multiple reasons why he is. Um, it's the kind of underdog esqueness. It's the um, fact that you know his morals mean so much to him. It's you know the, the family. It's the nerd. It's all of it. And the fact that he's always holding back. And then there's that. And that's what actually what I was going to get into. There's a, an amazing TikTok video. I'm sure you guys can find out there. Where a guy talks about why Spider Man's the best. Um, also, reminder that Cable did come back from the future to tell us that Spider Man does end up being the best out of all of them. So <laughs> we've, we've got it, you know, from the, the from the future man himself. But um, there's several points where we find out that Spider Man's holding back to make sure he doesn't kill the villains because he doesn't kill. And so there's actually a point where he just freaking one punches Kingpin because they're in prison together. And he has to, like, let everyone know not to fuck with him. And he just lays Kingpin the fuck out. Um, yeah, the Superior Spider-Man thing, the whole thing was weird. It, oh, I'm Octavius the... in Spidey's body. Octavius, uh, like, Spidey in Octavius's body. Someone has a bad opinion. Countdown. Top ten things that made Superior Spider-Man a superior comic book. <sighs> yeah. A lot of people liked it. I, I know that I'm kind of on the outs here with not liking it. Okay. All right. I mean, just as long as you, you admit that it's an ungeneralized opinion, yeah. but your opinion would matter more just because you've you've been with Spider-Man so long. I guess, yeah. But I, I also understand why maybe this appealed to certain people because it was seeing Spidey in a new light. But the problem is I can't get behind that, that of this is like a different version of Spider-Man because this isn't Spider-Man. It's, it's Otto Octavius in Spidey's body. It's not Spider-Man. So it, it ran way longer than it should have. Mm. This should have been a smaller arc, personally. So, But we got to uh, wrap this up soon. So oh, yeah. uh, uh, what do we got next? Uh, uh, Black Widow stuff. Yeah. Uh, during, it kind of got thrown in the middle of all of the... Uh, Summer of Gaming things, mm-hmm. but IGN also has Marvel's Black Widow and um, Marvel's Loki. Uh, a few snippets from there, from both of those. Uh, I recommend looking at them. Um, the Marvel's Black Widow kind of starts off a little rough. Like, I don't like having the, the face-to-face. I don't know why. It, it didn't need it. I, 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 it mm. <laughs> but everything else looked good. I, I love this whole entire trailer. The whole entire trailer looked good. It put it into perspective what she was doing on the full construction of um, pre-Avengers, joining Avengers, and finalizing. And And this is supposed to be after Winter Soldier, but before Civil. Oh, not before Civil. Um, After Winter Soldier, but before... Yeah, I, I think um, it, I think it's after Warner Social before Civil War. I think you're right. Yeah, but there, there's another thing uh, before uh, Iron Man one. No, it's not before Iron Man one. This is supposed to be during the exit. Well, I, I'm sure I, there are scenes that handled before then. I think there might be flashback scenes or something. But the whole Taskmaster, her, and these other people thing. I think it's after after that. Uh, yeah, I think it's after Warner Soldier. Oh, really? Yeah, because I think this is all kind of an aftermath of her releasing the shield piles. Oh, that would make sense. I think. I, I, I could be wrong. I mean, I, I'm sure that they'll put it all together for us. Because lately, with with how uh, the Marvel shows have been going, they've kind of been spelling things out for us, which I, I, I greatly appreciate. I'm not saying you guys are, they're dumbing it down for us, uh-huh. but they're dumbing it down to us 
with entertainment. So we're, we're, we're catching the whole thing okay. now. So here we go. They have confirmed that it takes place after Civil War, but they haven't presumably, they haven't said where it takes place before. Presumably oh. before Infinity War for obvious reasons. Okay. But uh, definitely after Civil War. So um, I was wrong. It was not Winter Soldier. It's Civil War. Okay. Okay. That's it. Okay. That's actually really interesting. So this is during the... Dur- hmm. So this would be... Just before... The snap. Yeah, this is well before the snap. So this is just this is just to cover just some ground of where she's at. Yeah, this is kind of what she's doing once the Avengers have broken up. Once uh, Cap and all of them have gone to Wakanda, and um, Tony's out there making his like Iron Legion shit, trying to put a suit around the world. Still crap. Yeah. So uh, it looks like it's going to be lots of action, lots of goodness. I'll, I'll go and watch it. Um, I didn't like that this came out after Infinity War. That kind of pissed me off. Um, yeah, same. I, I don't want to. It, it's the whole thing of you get a you get a prequel to someone you already know is going to die. Like yeah, I, I was, yeah, I was. I didn't know if I wanted to say it, but yeah, fuck it. it, it like it, it felt like they were playing safe. Like they know this movie's going to make money now because everyone's sad she's dead. Yeah, either I that, like that or because it's the whole she fell into the abyss. You saw her body, but there's also alternative timelines. How is this going to work? Yeah, I feel like Loki's going to change a lot about time. Uh, either Loki or uh, Doctor Strange. I think Strange is going to affect a lot, too. Because uh, Multiverse of Madness, who's to say that the Multiverse of Madness immediately fucks everything up? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, it's in a weird spot right now. Sometimes this is why I think they should stick closer to the comics. Not to say that the comics are perfect by any means. Hell, it took us 10 years to convince Marvel to let Bendis come in and let us know who the other Spider-Man was. Bendis. So my, uh, Brian Michael Bendis uh, did uh, Ultimate Spider-Man. Okay. Which is uh, Peter Parker, Peter Parker, Peter Parker. Peter Parker fucking dies and Miles Morales uh, happens. And Miles Morales has his run as Spider-Man becomes the character we know and love today. That I mean, Spider-Verse, yes. Yeah. Well, regular Peter Parker eventually ends up finding out about Miles Morales and, uh, from the Ultimate Universe and meets him and whatnot. And then you've got this whole two Spider-Man things. And the last panel is him uh, as Miles goes back to his dimension or whatever. And Peter goes, huh, wonder about, you know, in my universe miles and stuff like that in my universe and you see him like do like a google search or something like that and then just like what and that's where it fucking ended for like 10 years oh that would have yeah that would have grinded my nuts yeah and it was one of those things where we were convinced we were never going to get an answer and then finally uh marvel came together with bendis and whatnot and he came out and he he wrote the other issue but it, there was like a 10-year, if not more, real-life 10-year gap between these issues. Jesus. Yeah. And what, it was just something... I of, haven't read it. Oh, you haven't read I it? I haven't read it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, I, I've, I've got such a pile of comics to read. I think I might have it, but I have not read it. Yeah. Uh, I have so much reading to there, do. There's a couple in there that I might nab later today to, to read at home. Because there's a few in my collection that I just threw in there from... Uh, the last time we went to a convention so long ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I, po- I packed a box of the trade paperbacks and damn near threw my back out trying to lift it. <sighs> I was like, this was a bad idea. These you, should not all be together. You need to stretch. <laughs> Stretching would have saved me from this box. It, this box is like... It would have saved you from the pain. Yeah, well, maybe. All right. Um, and we're going to cap the night off with talking about some charity stuff. Yes. Uh, uh, Humble Choice um, over at Humble Bundle, uh, they just did a uh, month change, and right now you can get Civilization VI Platinum Edition along with a whole bunch of other games for uh, a really interesting charity. I believe it is one that I fully... Oh, no, that's right. You can choose your charities. I keep forgetting about that. Yeah, with um, Humble Choice, you get to choose them. That's yes. the choice. Yes, that is the choice. You get to choose <laughs> the games you get to play, and you get to choose the charities you get to help, as well as help us out. Uh, click the link in the description and help out some charities uh a couple of games of interest just going to mention real quick you weren't a big fan of hearing about it but good news if it helps out a charity i'm pretty sure you're going to be okay with it that worms I rumble I, I am all for helping charities uh going under i've heard some interesting funny things about um panzer paladin i i'm always down for max you ain't got to tell me twice yeah. Uh, Desolate, I heard, was really interesting as far as, like, survival horror. 
and I'm always cool with that too. Inkfell, I didn't get too far into it, but it's kind of cute. It's about a girl that goes looking for her sister who went to a magic school, and they haven't heard from her in a while. I might actually be interested in that one too. Uh, and all the other ones I don't know too much about. Secret Neighbor is the follow-up to um, Hello Neighbor, and yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, Stubbs the Zombie... Uh, Rebel Without a Pulse is a nice following. It's basically Stubbs Zombie remastered. Yeah, but they didn't really remaster it all that well. No, they didn't. It's it's spo- I think it's supposed to be in that style, maybe. Yes. I don't know. But uh, get twelve games for twelve bucks every month. Good stuff. Yep, we got a link in the description. Go ahead and click that. Check out Geek Grind Coffee. Don't forget to uh, like, subscribe, tell a friend, tell an enemy, tell a frenemy. Tell a frenemy. Uh, you know, get us out there, spread the love. Um, and uh, we hope you guys have a great Pride Month. Yes. Happy Pride Month. Happy Pride Month, everybody. Bye.